Okay, guys. As you can see, guys, uh, I think some of us are not aware that uh, we are only left with um, like a month. So October is our last month. So let's let's push push so that we can have time for revision. And please make sure that you do assessment number two as soon as possible. Uh, then I can see some of you okay struggling with some of the questions. Please make sure that with test number two you recover, and again take advantage of writing these assessments online. There are talks of uh, 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 making sure that the next assessment can be on campus. Can you see if you don't take advantage of this online thing, especially those who didn't take advantage of the first assessment? Just imagine if you come and write here at the campus. So it's going to be a challenge. Okay, so please make sure that you do. I'm not sure whether they're going to decide to change all the assessments to be written at the campus. So, but yeah, so let's bear that in mind, okay? Now let's talk about the bank reconciliation statement, guys. And remember so far, just to remind ourselves, okay? Remember so far, we have gone through the process of accounting, remember? The accounting cycle starts from the transactions. Remember, we did transactions. So when I talk about the transactions, I think you are not surprised. You know that a transaction is a financial activity. We know our transactions. From our transactions, we had to transfer them to the source documents. Remember, the source documents are those credit invoices, credit notes, cash receipts, Petty cash general, uh, voucher. Please make sure that you know those things. Okay, from the petty, from those source documents, we went to the subsidiary journals. Remember when we talked about the cash receipts journal? Please make sure that you know them. The cash payments journal, the petty cash journals. Remember those three journals are the ones which we had to uh, uh, calculate. Uh, but the other journals, we had to just understand them. Remember the other journals were the debtors journal, debtors allowances journal, creditors journal, creditors allowances journal, and then the other journals. Okay. And again, GJ, we had to know the general journal. Remember the general journal was that journal whereby we record all those items which could not be recorded under the other journals. Okay. Let's make sure that you go through that. Make sure that you understand them better. So that by the time when we go and do revision, it will not like uh, look like it's a new thing, okay? So please make sure that you go back and refresh, okay? I have got no, I gave you notes, guys. Uh, I gave you like we've got the recorded videos, things like that. We have got the manual, uh, guys. For you to fail, I think it would be just be a choice at the end of the day. So you have got all the support you need, okay? And then from the subsidiary originals, remember about the general ledger so it's where we opened accounts in the general ledger remember the general ledger was that one in a t form which has got a debit and a credit okay and thereafter from the general ledger we had to transfer the trial balance our last session was based on the trial balance a trial balance is that remember it has got a debit and a credit it checks the correctness of the general ledger accounts remember those general ledger accounts need to be transfer to the trial balance so that we can check whether our figures were cor uh, calculated correctly. But we also mentioned the fact that under the trial balance, sometimes the trial balance balances with the wrong figures because of the errors which we made. Remember, I told you about the errors which can be revealed by the trial balance and the errors which cannot be revealed by the trial balance. So please make sure that you know more about those errors. And again, you must know that when you are recording a general ledger account in the trial balance, you either record on the debit side or the credit side, okay? But how can you decide where to put a particular item on the debit side or on the credit side of the trial balance? You need to know your rules. You will record the account on the debit side of the trial balance if by nature that account increase on the debit side. So for example, if you've got bank, you know that bank is an asset. Where do assets increase? Assets will increase on the debit side. It means when you go to the balance, that particular asset will be on the debit side. So you must know your rules so that you can be able to answer your trial balance. And then from the trial balance is then that we're going to talk about the bank reconciliation statement. Why? Because you can only be able to deal with the bank reconciliation statement 
after you have dealt with what we have dealt with before. For example, we dealt with a cash a receipt journal, a cash payments journal. So now because we know more about them, we are going to use them to reconcile the bank. Okay, so don't worry. This is very interesting. So we're going to go through it. And then today I'm just going to go through the theory, guys. Just to give you the theory. And when we have another session next week, we're going to take an exercise and make sure that we understand better. And let me see yes or no. If you understand so far, let me see yes. And then let me see. Just acknowledge so that I can know that I can proceed. Or if you've got any questions, you may ask so that I can clarify. Thank you so much, Tim. Thank you so much. I appreciate this. Thank you, Litabo. Thank you, Leila. Thank you, Kim. Thank you, Jay. Gwanda, thank you, Tembes, Yabonga. Thank you so much for that. Yes, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I appreciate guys. Okay. Thank you, guys. What about Ember? Busisiwe. Netisi, do you understand? Samilani, do you understand? Thank you so much. Zoe, do you understand? Let me see before I continue. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Please, these notes uh, have been uploaded. Please just check my notes. And I like the fact that you, some of you are honest about the fact that you never go through your material on your own. <laughs> I do understand. You've got a lot on your plate. But please, sometimes just go and check your... Uh, Adam, it's okay, Samalele. Welcome, welcome. Uh, I was just checking if, you, let's say, for example, you have got any questions from the previous sections before I can deal with the bank recon. So, don't worry about that. So, please, uh, I'm happy that you joined us. Please make sure that you join us if you can, okay? Yes, thank you so much, guys. Okay, let's just get into it, guys, and then we'll take it from there. Okay. We can you can still ask a question if you have one. Okay, guys. Now, I think that you, if you are in business, uh, you know that you need to have your own books, like what you've been doing so far, like dealing with the cash receipts, dealing with the transactions and things like that. Those activities take place in our business. Okay, so if you've got a Sylvester Dish LTD, my business, so I need to have the books of accounts so that I can check the performance of my business, so that I can be able to know my financial position for that particular business, okay? It is important for you to keep the records of your books, okay? If, I think maybe some of you have registered businesses before. You know, sometimes when you register a business, they normally ask you uh, who is going to be your accounting officer, and they advise you to, uh, to have a bank account for the business. So as a businessman or a businesswoman, you need to separate the, your money from the business money. In other words, you must have a bank account for the business and you must have your own bank account. So don't mix the money that belongs to the business and the money that belongs to, the, uh, uh, to you, okay? So at the end of the day, you need to have the bank account, okay? So you, uh, why do we have to have the bank account? Because at the end of the day, we need to keep records of what belongs to the business. So by having the bank account, it means you have to have to open your own bank account in your business. Okay. Remember when we talked about the bank recon before, we talked about uh, not being bank recon, the bank account. Remember the bank account looked like this, the T account like this. That was the bank account. Okay. So this bank account was opened in our books. Okay. In our books, we had to have a bank account like this. So it means whatever you receive from the clients must be recorded in this bank account. But remember, the cash that you received from your clients, you need to keep it. You need to deposit it at, let's say, APSA or NetBank, for example, here. So you must have a bank account at APSA or any other bank. So what we record in our books as a business? must be the same as what the bank statement reflects. For example, if I received 10 million from my clients, so my bank account in my book need to show that 10 million. 
And that 10 million must be deposited at the bank. The minute I deposit that money into the bank, my bank statement needs to reflect the 10 million that I have in my books. Can you see now? So my bank account that I opened in my books must be the same as the amount that uh, is appearing on the bank statement. But unfortunately, that is not always the case. So sometimes you can find that I've got 10 million in my books, but under the bank or in, on the bank statement, I don't have that 10 million because of the temporary differences, because of what we call the timing differences. Maybe one day you went to the bank and they say, okay, that we are offline. Remember, if you are offline, they will still accept the money. The bank will still accept the money. But when you check the bank statement, you'll find that your money is not reflected there because of those temporary or timing differences. The minute they are back online is then that they can update their books and therefore whatever you deposited will reflect on the bank statement. So those differences will always be there. That's why we need to reconcile the differences between our own bank account and the bank statement. It's like you in your personal life. Sometimes uh, you can have differences with someone else. But sometimes you decide and say, please, let's reconcile the differences. Even though things are not the same at the moment, for now, let's reconcile and move on. Maybe in two months or three months, things will be the same, meaning we're going to get along. Can you see? The same applies to the, the, the bank and our books. We know that at the moment, things are not corresponding, but we reconcile because we expect that maybe after three days or after two days, after a month, we will have the same bigger uh, figures, both our books and the bank statement. Any questions, guys? Let me see, yes, if you are following, guys. Thank you, Zamilani. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Litabo. Thank you, thank you, Leila Tembe. Thank you, Mladelo. Thank you, Letisi. Thank you so much, Kim. Thank you, thank you. I appreciate, guys. If you understand, I feel better. Okay. But if you don't say anything, I, I feel and you know at ease. Okay. Kwanda, thank you so much. Please make sure that you ask a question if you're not on the same page. Okay. Let's move on. Let's move on. Thank you so much, Yabonga. Nyabonga. Thank you. Now, it is important to understand our books. And I think most of us understand the statement. I think if you don't understand how to read the bank statement, people are always going to take your money from the bank. So you need to understand the bank statement. As you can see here, guys, yes, I tried to explain here. So what I'm trying to explain is the fact that you need to open a, your account, bank account, in your own business gives you your own entity but at the same time you need to have a bank statement so this is the books of the bank okay so it means you need this is where i'm gonna let me write it for you guys is where i'm gonna have a bank statement okay so it means when you have got money let's say for example think about a man of my caliber uh, let's say i take my 10 million at the moment and i go to the bank and i deposit that money that i deposited in the bank is my own money so in my books i must record that 10 million as my asset can you see now so it is important that i record it as my asset Why? because asset is what belongs to me that money belongs to me that's why in books i need to go and record on the debit side okay i think you remember the reason why we record on this debit side is because my assets increase on the debit side that's why here i recorded on the debit side is because that 10 million that i'm talking about okay that 10 million is my own money okay so we need to understand why do we record it on the so this 10 million is my own money remember bank increase on the debit side so that's why i put it on the debit side yeah. but remember when i deposit that money at the bank at apsa at fnb at capitech can you see now that money apsa is keeping it on my behalf that money does not belong to sir uh, to, to to apsa that money belongs to me meaning under apsa's books 
I am their liability. That's why in Absa's books, they will credit me. Can you see here? I credit. So meaning the 10 million that I have at the end of the day needs to be credited. Why do we credit? It's because under Absa's books, I am their liabilities or liability. So they owe me. That's why they have to credit me. Can you see now? Again, this satisfies what we call the double entry system. When we debit one account, we credit the other. So that's why when you receive money on the bank statement, they credit you. Because if they debit you, it means they, uh, uh, you owe them. For example, have you ever had someone saying, hey, my credit orders did not go through uh, this month? No, they don't say my credit orders. Because if you say credit, if you they say debit orders because when you debit me on the bank statement it means you take out my money but in my own books when i debit myself it means i received money is everyone following ladies and gentlemen can i see yes can i see yes please or maybe ask a question if you're lost thank you so much thank you so much Natello, Kim, thank you. The table, thank you so much. Tempe, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Okay, so slowly, thank you. So slowly but surely, guys, we're going to understand at the end of the day. Can you see now? That's why I want you to understand the basics before I can go and record. Thank you, Siamonga. So make sure that you understand. Because if you don't understand, you're going to make mistakes. Perfect. Thank you. Okay, so otherwise, I move on. Okay. Remember, you can still revisit this video because it's right. Okay. Now, like I'm trying to put it again in a different way here. Can you see now? So our cash books, when I talk about the cash books, guys, I'm referring to, we have dealt with the, those cash books. I'm referring to CRJ. I think you still remember this crj stands for the cash receipts and i'm referring to cpj so we're still going to talk about those uh, generous ones again because they are our cash book so this is where we receive money this is where we pay money okay so our books must be the same as the bank statement but unfortunately they are not always the same because of these differences né? sometimes we still have to adjust books sometimes we still have remember i talked about the timing differences when you go to the bank you deposit money but it doesn't reflect yet okay sometimes we make errors you know sometimes a bank can give you five million by mistake that is an error so we need to reconcile them you need to tell the bank and say here i have got a problem i received one million here is your money reconcile don't use the money because at the end of the day they can end up saying pay back that particular money okay so remember about this scandal of one of the students who received 14 million from the nefsas this government uh, loan so can you see now if you use that money you're going to be in problem so in business the minute you have got any amount in the bank statement that you don't understand please inform the bank because it's an error we need to reconcile immediately okay so it is important to know that the cash book and our bank statement must always be the same but sometimes and in most times the figures are not the same because of differences and the errors okay so we are going to reconcile this okay Now, you will understand, you will see by the time when we record. Eh? Firstly, we have to understand, remember on the previous slides, I said we have got different types of differences. One of them are adjusting differences. I think you understand the word adjusting. The word adjusting means you either increase or decrease. So when we say something is an adjusting difference, it means that particular item will be recorded in our will either go to the cash receipts in our, or it can either be recorded in the cash payments. General. Okay. So you will see anything that is adjusting, it means, for example, remember here we are comparing our books with the bank statement. It means these items which you see 
here. These items are appearing on the bank statement. Let me write it down for you. They are appearing on the bank statement, but not yet in the cash books. So what I mean, what are the cash books? Remember, cash books are cash receipts. The cash books are these two. Can you see? The cash books are the cash payment and the cash receipt general. So if let's say, for example, let's think about Vasti College. Let's say you pay Vasti College today, you pay them 10,000, okay? Remember, you don't pay them here at the counter. You go to the bank and you deposit 10,000, or maybe you use EFT. Do you know that because you don't call Vasti College and tell them that you pay 10,000, meaning Vasti College can only be aware of that 10,000 when they have a bank statement unless if you send them the proof immediately can you see so the minute they see that ten thousand on the bank statement it means they must go and adjust can you see now they must go and adjust in our books so meaning this everything that you see here appears on the bank statement and now we must go and update our books remember our main aim is to make sure that our books are the same as the bank statement so now I've got a bank statement now. I realize that there is a 10,000 that I received from the student. Now I must go and update my books because that 10,000 only appears on the bank statement, but not yet in our books. Can you see now? So we call them adjusting differences. So adjusting differences mean those uh, figures appear on the bank statement, but not yet in our books any questions about the adjusting differences so when we adjust it means we adjust our books when we adjust it means we adjust our cash books and those cash books can either be crj or cpj okay so this is what we are trying to do okay these things appear so we're going to take an exercise not today but at a later stage just to go and apply this theory because for me this theory is very much important can i see yes for understanding please let me see yes for understanding guys thank you so much thank you thank you little thank you thank you so much guys okay I appreciate it. Tell me anything. Thank you. Thank you, Kim. Thank you, Kim. Thank you, Kim. Okay. Thank you, Nedisi. Thank you, Ember. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now, I was talking about the adjusting differences. Remember, adjusting differences are the ones which are appearing on the bank statement, but not yet in our cash books. But what about the timing? So the timing differences are those items which are appearing in our cash books, but not yet on the bank statement. Okay, so it's just a complete opposite of the adjusting. Okay. So these items, they are appearing in our books in other words for example now let's say for example i receive money from a student let's say you are allowed to pay school fees here at varsity college let's say you pay that ten thousand at the counter here so in our books for varsity college they are going to write ten thousand received can you see in the bank account so that ten thousand must be taken to the bank and be deposited there Remember, the minute I deposit, I expect that amount of money to reflect on the bank statement. Okay. So let's say, for example, the 10,000 that I deposited does not reflect on the bank statement yet. So that item will be called a timing diff. Why? Because it is appearing in my books, but not yet on the bank statement. That's why we call them outstanding, as you can see here. We talk about outstanding. So if you have outstanding checks and outstanding deposit, it means these ones are still going to be uh, reflected on the 
statement. And they will be recorded in a statement that is called, let me change here. The statement that I'm going to use here, we're going to record this into what you call bank reconciliation statement. Okay. We're going to record this into the bank reconciliation statement. Okay. So we need to remember this by the time empty now. So this will go to the bank reconciliation statement. So we need to make sure that we remember these two. Okay. We are going to record them in the bank reconciliation statement. Can you see now? These are the timing. So for now, I just want you to understand the difference between the timing and the adjusting. Adjusting appear on the bank statement, but not yet in our books. But the timing, they appear in our books, but not yet on the bank statement. That's how we take them to a statement, which is called the bank reconciliation statement. But don't worry, we still have to go through these questions so that we can know how to record. For now, like I'm saying, guys, it's all about theory that is relevant for us to be in a position to deal with those calculations at a later stage. Okay. Any questions, guys, about the timing difference? So, guys, here, so here I'm going to just do it like this. Here I meant timing differences. Okay, that's the timing differences. Okay, okay. Let's see. Let's continue. Now, let's talk about the errors, guys. You know that... Um, Sometimes we make errors. I think no one is perfect. I'm telling you, no one is perfect. We all make errors. Okay, we can call them mistakes. And we repeat the same mistakes. We repeat the same mistakes. Can you see? Sometimes mistakes are repeated. But maybe because of the carelessness, but sometimes it's because of the situation at the end of the day. Yes, even in business, even if you can be a top accountant, you sometimes make mistakes. Sometimes you record 10,000 instead of 15,000. Sometimes you record 15,000 instead of 14,000. Sometimes we overstate, sometimes we understate. Sometimes the bank itself, APSA, can overstate your deposit. You can deposit 1,000 rand in your bank, but APSA says you deposit 10,000. Can you see now? So those errors need to be rectified. So it's important to note the errors. What I want you to understand is the fact that you need to check who made the error between us and the business, uh, uh, between us as a business and the bank as APSA. So any error that has been made by us must be corrected in our own books. Okay, I think you're following. So if let's say we make an error when we were uh, recording under cash receipt journal and under cash payments journal. So who must correct that error? The error must be corrected by the business itself because those errors were made in our books. But the minute the error is made by the bank, normally errors that are made by the bank are reflected on the bank statement. So those errors must be rectified in the bank reconciliation statement. Okay, so you need to be careful. Errors by the bank. I say by the bank, I'm referring to APSA or FNB. Must be rectified in the bank reconciliation statement. Okay. So we need to understand this. Can you see that? So if the error has been made by the bank, in other words, we see that error. On the bank statement, it means the bank made a mistake. So the error must be rectified on the bank recon by the time when I record. But if the error was uh, detected, so we need to know that we correct that error in the books. Can you see now? It depends whether you have uh, uh, understated under CRJ or CPJ. Depending on that, we will decide whether we correct the error under cash payments general or cash receipt center. Is everyone following when it comes to the errors, guys? Let me see, yes, to show that you understand, ladies and gentlemen.
Thank you so much, Mlatelo. Thank you, Litabo. Thank you, uh, Litabo. Yes, and Karabo. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, guys. I appreciate the Melanie September Layla. Thank you, Sibonga Kwanda. I'm happy, guys. If you understand, I ah, know. I'm telling you. I will be more than happy. And it's, it's, and it's Friday, by the way, so I must be happy. It's Friday. So if you don't make me sad on this Friday, okay? Nah. Guys, again, I'm just trying to, you know, I didn't have to do this because your book is trying sometimes, but yeah, I just have to, you know, break down things for you so that when we record, or maybe when you try your exam, you know, uh, and then you can, you know, some people have tried, started exams already now. They are answering exams. Like I said before, don't wait till the last minute. If there's a question in the exam that you can answer, if I were you, I'll answer that question so that I can just, you know, uh, try to minimize the amount of pressure. Because I know when you have to submit, maybe you're going to submit uh, two modules on the same day. Hey, things happen. Can you see now? Now, here I'm just trying to say, by the time on your record, remember when I'm talking about the cash books, I'm talking about the cash receipts and the cash payment. Remember, the cash receipt is a book whereby we record all the cash received. Cash payment is a book whereby we are going to record all the cash paid. Okay, here I'm just trying to show you uh, what we are going to record in the cash books. So here I said EFT, sometimes we use EFT, we're going to record in the CPJ. So obviously, uh, you need to read the transition carefully. Sometimes we have got interest on, on overdrafts. Uh, it depends who is paying there, but we're still going to talk about this. The debit orders, sometimes we've got the stop orders, sometimes we overstate, sometimes we understate. Can you see? The bank charges, dishonored checks. When I talk about the dishonored checks, I'm talking about if, let's say, for example, we received a check from a, uh, a client and that check uh, is returned by the bank because of the insufficient funds. So we call that what? Dishonored check. We're going to record in the CPJ, okay? And sometimes we have got uh, interest on credit balances. For example, when you receive money because interest because you've got money in the bank, sometimes you've got deposit from our customers, sometimes we overstate in CRJ, uh, sometimes you overstate. So these things will make sense by the time we record. But please, I'm just giving you this in advance. Okay. So let me change this one. I think this one um, uh, here, this must be CPJ, guys. Sorry, this must be CPJ. Uh, because it's the interest on overdraft. Let me just draw a line here. This must be CPJ. Okay. Uh, this must be CPJ. CPJ. Because obviously we're going to pay this. Okay. We are paying this. We're not receiving. So whatever you receive will be in the CRJ. Whatever you pay, uh, it will be in the CPJ. Can you see again? I tried to show you under the bank reconciliation statement here. We put the outstanding deposits uh, and outstanding checks. Remember, I just talked about this outstanding. It means they are appearing in our books here, but not yet on the bank statement. So if they're not appearing on the bank statement, they will be recorded in the bank reconciliation statement. Okay. And again, the bank errors. Remember, I told you the errors which have been made by the bank must be taken to the bank recon. Sometimes you add them, sometimes you less them, depending on the nature of that particular error okay and again this will make sense by the time when we record okay and again i'm trying to show you once again our ultimate goal is to make sure that our books are the same as the bank statement but this will not always be the case because of those differences which we uh, indicated before okay i hope everyone is following us if you do if you have got a question let me know okay Uh, this is just a process, guys, of comparing the CR. Uh, this slide, for example, I just gave you a short process. You will see uh, we will be taking. So remember, I said we compared the books and the bank statements. So for us to be able to know whether something is appearing or not, we need to compare. We need to compare the CRJ, the CPJ, even the previous bank record with the bank statement. So how can we know those differences? We will know by comparing how so we're gonna keep ticking, ticking. Okay, but at the moment the process won't make sense. But you will see by the time when we start recording, you will understand better. The process will be very, very, very useful. So again, guys, I just said let me just give them this so that maybe they understand how to do this. Okay. Again, this one is gonna be useful at a later stage, ladies and gentlemen. Okay.
again uh, guys just trying to you know i explained these things i even gave you more from the previous page but you know that sometimes explaining things in a different way they do help a lot okay so like uh, for example you know that uh, the bank charges you bank charges. like for example if you can go and check your bank statement they normally charge you some fees there sometimes because you have withdrawn five thousand they can charge you ten for example those bank charges obviously will affect your business but remember those bank charges are reflected on your bank statement it means you need to record them in your book so the bank charges will all go to the cpj because you are going to pay for them okay so the bank charges will go to the cpj and uh, like the interest on overdraft i think you all know the overdraft the overdraft uh, for example is a situation whereby you you have got a negative balance can you see now uh but overdraft sometimes are arranged so if you've got a good record you can arrange with the bank so that if you are broke you don't have to go to someone and say can you please give me the money you can even use the money that you don't have on the bank account but they will charge you that interest okay and remember that interest is a payment so again for this one for the interest charged on overdraft this will be our recorded in our cpj because we are going to pay that can you see it's all about understanding whether to pay something or receiving something so you need to understand when you read a transaction okay um sometimes a check becomes stale you know that if let's say you've been given a check uh you need to go and claim that money as soon as possible but you've got six months to claim that money for example let's say for example you have got one million for the first time in your life you know that you know having one million is like the world has changed and you want everyone to know that you have got that million uh, let's say one million and then you have to show your friends and family you know that you have to go and show your friends in uh, in uh, kwasulu natala in maybe in limpopo there your friends around all over the world can you see now just know that you have got only six months because if you can that check can reach six months without you uh, claiming the money. That check will be called a stale check. Can you see now? So a stale check is a, is a check that is at least six months old. So it means when you go and claim money after six months or on the six months, the bank will not give you the money. They will ask you to go back and ask for a new check. That check stay. Okay. So uh, we need to make sure that we know where to record the stale check so normally we as the business we issue checks to pay someone let's say i give you a check here and i pay you a check of one million so you must claim that check within six months if the check is at least six months or at least six months you cannot claim that uh, money anymore so it means you must come back to me so that i can give you a new check remember if i pay you with a check now in my books immediately i record that i paid you it means that one million is reflected under cpj but when you come back and ask for a new check it means i must reverse that i must reverse this particular stale check that's why i need to go and record it under crj so the stale checks will always go under what crj because i need to receive that money back and issue a new amount i hope that you are following so a stale check is six old it must always be recorded in the crj in other words you get it back before you can issue another one okay the next thing is like i talked about the dishonored check okay sometimes the bank uh, returns the check because the check that you have maybe it's because of insufficient funds you know sometimes uh, you can find that we have got insufficient funds. Uh, so the bank cannot give you uh, the money if we have got insufficient funds, okay? So let's say, for example, in your bank, you have got 5 million and you have to pay me 10. The bank cannot give me 5 million and say, come back for, uh, for another five. They will dishonor the check. They will say, go back to the person who gave you the check, okay? So uh, the, the, the bank can still dishonor that check. So RD stands for refer to the drawer. It means go back to the person who gave you the check because there is insufficient funds. Can you see now? So all those insufficient funds will go to what? CPJ. Because we are reversing the receipt that we thought we received. Okay. So we need to understand these basics. Okay. And again, the errors, it depends. 
So the errors, for example, uh, if you overstated the error, let's say, I can give an example. Let's say in this, let me start with the CRJ. Let's say in the CRJ, uh, you have got, uh, and, um, you recorded how much? Let's say you recorded 1,000, which is incorrect. Okay. And then, and the correct amount, let's say the correct amount, is 1,200. Just give you an example, guys. Can you see here, you understated. You were supposed to record 1,200, and then you only recorded what? 1,000. It means you must correct this to make it what? 1,200. So you must go and record another 200. Can you see that? So, it means if you understate, this 200 must be recorded in the book where you understated, meaning the, the CRJ, you must go to the CRJ and record this 200 in the CRJ. Because you understated, are you okay? So the rule says, if you understated, you need to record the amount which is still to be recorded in the same book where you understated. It makes sense because in the CRJ, at the moment, you only have 1,000, and now you, you were supposed to record 1,200. So you must go to the same book with CRJ to record 200 to make it what? 1,200. Can I see yes if you understand? So I call this, you understated. Let me see yes. Before I talk about overstated. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Milatelo. Thank you, thank you. Litabo, thank you. Tempe, Samantha. Thank you, thank you, thank you, guys. I appreciate Sabonga. Thank you so much, Kim. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Samelani. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, guys. Okay. Now, remember here I was talking about the understated. Okay. But let me talk about the situation. I'm still going to talk about the CRJ. But let me talk about the situation whereby uh, I overstated. Let's say, for example, here, I'm going to squeeze it here. Uh, let's say, for example, we have got CRJ of 1,500, okay, which is incorrect. Okay. Sorry, guys, I hope we can see that is incorrect. Uh, but the correct amount is 1,100. Can you see here? So here I have overstated. So I recorded 1,500 instead of 1,100. So in meaning there's a difference of what? Of 400. So that 400 will be recorded in the CPJ. Can you see the difference between the understated and the overstated? So if you overstated in a book, the difference must be recorded in the opposite book for you to correct the error. So I want you to get this thing, guys. Understated, you have to go to the same book where you understated. But if you overstated, the difference must go to the book, which is opposite to the book where you are overstated. Can you see I overstated under CRJ? So for me to record the error or to rectify the error, I must go to the opposite book, which is opposite to the CRJ. That's why I recorded in the CPJ. The same applies even if I record in the CPJ. I must do the same thing. If I overstated under CPJ, I'm going to record the difference under CRJ. But if I understated under CPJ, the difference in the same book where I understated. Can I see? Yes, guys, if you are following. So these errors are the errors which I made in my books. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you, Emba. Thank you, Mlatilita Melani. Elto Emba Leilam Kim Zitembe Siabonga. Thank you so much. Okay. But remember, the errors which have been made by the bank, like I said, must always go to the bank reconciliation. Like, very much important. So we need to understand it. Okay. Not bad, not bad, not bad. Thank you, guys. 
this is an example guys that we're gonna go through uh, i don't know if you've got the energy but i think i don't want to overload you guys i don't want i don't want to overload uh you know but if you feel like we can take four hours i don't mind you know i can continue with you but this is how a question will look like they will give you a bank statement can you see now this is the bank statement and please remember a bank statement has got a debit and a credit who can tell me on the bank statement a debit and a credit which one is favorable and which one is unfavorable please tell me right on the chat so i want you to tell me on the bank statement which side is favorable and which side is unfavorable or which side is a plus and which side is an is a minus please try on the chat Please let me see. Uh, come on, you either choose. No one is perfect. So which side do you think is a favorable side and which side is an unfavorable side? Thank you, Litabo. Thank you, Zoe. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Perfect, guys. Thank you so much. So the minute, thank you, Kim. Uh, thank you, Mulatello. Um, thank you so much. So remember, the bank statement is the complete opposite of our own bank account in our books, okay? So thank you so much. David minus, yes, you are correct. You are correct, guys. So as you can see, whatever comes to the David, it means money went out. And whatever comes to the credit, it means money went in, okay? So very much important so they will give you a bank statement like this can you see and then we're going to learn more about that okay uh let's see can you see they will also give you can you see this what i like about this section remember when we dealt with our cash receipts and the cash payment it had many columns remember date details remember we had portfolio the bank uh, the sales things like that so here we only need this information can you see now we only need the information about the amount when they say the amount don't be confused this is you received so immediately exams because i know the examiners are like this just write on top of that and call this column a bank so you know that you will know that it's a bank because you are receiving cash it's all about cash remember we say bank because we are dealing with cash even this one is bank can you see now you don't have to worry about that so just know that we are going to use this by the time when we deal with the calculation but i need fresh mind especially for this one guys and guys because uh, this one has got a, this question is a little bit longer it's going to be difficult for me to uh, to put it on the same slide as my uh, answer book so what i want you to do next time when we do this question i want you to have this question on your own can you see now let's say when i i go to the next slide remember with the vc lane when i go to the next slide it will remove the whole information so i'm not going to go back and forth so i want you to have this information you either print it if you've got the printer or you either download this so that you can see what i'm talking about by the time when we record okay so but this is how they will give it to you uh, this is the receipts this is the cash we received on top here cash receipts and this is the payments we made okay and they will also give you the additional information can you see we're going to go through this information and the first thing that we need to do they will ask us to complete the cash payments and the cash receipts and they will ask us to transfer to the general ledger the bank account and the last thing we're going to deal with what the bank reconciliation statement so this is the something that i'm going to show you okay guys and then uh, thereafter this is the format that i'm going to use can you see this is the format that i'm going to use okay so i'm going to use this and record in this box Okay, so please make sure that you have got this question by the time when we deal with the calculations, okay? So any questions, guys? Uh, this is the theory that, uh, that uh, uh, I wanted us to go through, guys. Guys, please let me, just satisfy me today. On the chat, just tell me if this you got something from this lesson or not, whether this was positive, whether you got the basics right. Please let me see on the chat. Tell me something, please. Can I see? 13 13 uh, like chats i want to see 13 chats otherwise i continue with the question otherwise i'm going to take the question thank you so much samantha thank you thank you thank you Letabo. thank you it makes the difference thank you kim thank you so much 
Thank you, Sitembe. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. All good. Thank you, Mladelo Siabonga. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Because the basics are very much important. The basics are very much. Thank you, Mladelo Thank you. I appreciate it. Very much important. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. So we thank you, thank you. Okay. Yes, I think, yeah. Oh, thank you, Zoe. Thank you, Laila. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So I think, yeah, like I said, guys, I can continue, but I don't think that it's good to do too much. You'll end up forgetting. So I want you to go and make sure that you get this basic once again on your own. And thereafter, when we meet, I think next week, it doesn't matter when, uh, we are going to go through the calculus. So if you don't have any other questions, guys, I think we can call it a day, unless if you want me to continue or you have got a question. Thank you so much, guys. Have a great one. Please keep safe out there. I still need you next week. Okay, remember, without you, uh, I won't do anything, you know. So just know that uh, I depend on you and you depend on me, okay? Thank you so much, guys. Have a great one.